Well, good morning. Thank you for joining. Uh, it's been a while. And uh, the last class, I think we understood what Pega APIs are, how exactly we can use them uh, to get data against different APIs which are provided. We understood how exactly it helps us out in fetching that data by just navigating through to the Pega API wizard, which Pega provides, and then how we can, you know, provide the necessary details and fetch the data from application standpoint at a node standpoint or case type standpoint how we can perform get post and different operations and gather data is something which we understood that was good so today we'll be going one step further uh, in terms of understanding the application a slightly advanced topic uh, but hopefully we'll be trying to capture and learn what exactly it means. So today's topic is logging in Pega. So how exactly logging works in Pega is something we'll try to understand. So to start with, of course, I want to know from your standpoint, what do you understand when we say logs? These are not the wooden logs which you see. This is not those logs. These logs are application or logs which make sense in terms of, you know, IT or a software application. Why do why would anyone need logging? You know, why would application need logging? For example, if you take Facebook as an app, you know, what happens as part of Facebook every day? Well, for example, today whatever happens in Facebook has to have a certain logging established for that. Do we agree? Like who accessed which part of the application? you know, who clicked on which picture, stuff like that keeps getting logged. Log is nothing but, you know, a place where the your application, for example, Facebook application keeps spitting the data about who did what into a file. Does it make sense? Who did what today kind of a approach to understand, you know, that your application keeps spitting the data or keeps putting the data into a file where it tells, okay, Harish logged into the application to today at a given timestamp. That way, someone who wants to understand or debug any issue can go back to those logs and see who did what at a given timestamp. Let us say Harish logged into his bank account and he withdrew $10,000 or 10,000 rupees. And then somehow the front end is not showing them those details. Whenever you have logging enabled or you're performing proper logging in your application, anyone can go back to that log file and see and say, hey, okay, there is this particular, you know, transaction which happened, which Harish performed and looks like we haven't documented that. So that's a high level of what log files are like, you know, to capture predominantly to capture application issues, we will be using log files and could be any events like whatever events you are doing, whatever operation you're doing in your application is nothing but an event. The notifications could be anything like, you know, maybe the system shut down all of a sudden and users are complaining to you that, hey, uh, we're not able to see, we're not able to access the application. The first place you go to see what has happened is log files. That should be your resolve in very important question in Intuit. It's slightly advanced, it comes in the uh, senior system architect sort of a realm, but it is very necessary, this debugging option, because you won't be, most of the times when you are onboarded into a team, you won't be given brand new development. It, it was always some issue which they are facing or a bug they have got. You'll be assigned that and you'll have to understand what is going wrong. So logs come to your help to understand that issues. Why? Because you know uh, where certain error came and how severe is the error. To understand that, you can go and figure out that through the logs. What caused this particular error to behave so that the application is behaving unexpectedly? Does it make sense? Yes, no, perfect. So to access the logs within Pega, of course, there are many other ways using different outside tools, but within Pega is what we are focusing this session on. So we'll understand how exactly we can access logs from the configure button. 
every developer can access this configure button system and then if you come to operations there is logs configure button system operations logs configure button system operation logs click on that once you can click on this particular wizard you will be presented with a few op options one is the log files something called as settings and external log viewer don't worry about the next two just click on log files see it tells you lets you view or download the current pega log security log alert log and other logs is what it tells that's fine let's click on it now you see a list of logs see a list of logs up available here so if you see here the appender file is something which is determining or is managing these logs just for understanding nothing to uh, you know remember here or anything just for your understanding so these are the logs which are commonly used in the pega platform whichever pega platform you go these are standard logs you will see nothing else but these logs every pega application should have these logs it's not going to change on any application you go it could be manufacturing banking insurance any application these are the standard logs which are available there let's start with our first log if you see there is something called as pega a pega log pg pega log and then it ends with pega rules dot log pega rules dot log all the changes you do in your business logic could be from the application standpoint any warning or error or any information about internal operations this log is going to capture that this is also called as the console log or system log you know and why do we use it every log is used for debugging purpose you have a bug to debug it you use these logs let's just try to click on it and see see right now i just have one particular line here which is coming when i clicked on that log file it is giving me just one particular line this is because it has filtered the event if you see here it has applied these filters what is it telling it is telling 500 lines per page number of pages presented is 1000 pages it can expand to and filter by only this user is what it is telling whatever this user has done it is filtering to it i don't want it i want to keep it generic I can remove this guy, remove the filter, and lines per page I want, let us say 5000. Okay, and then I say apply. Now, if you see the lines got increased, yes or no? Yes or no, guys? Perfect. So, this is how you will be accessing a log that is through configure system and operations. And here you see all these log files okay and when you try to look at a log file it looks like gibberish to you i know because you guys have not worked before or you have not accessed a log file before is what i'm assuming and i'm thinking this looks like what is this it doesn't make sense to you it looks like small and you know it's not something which is making sense to you there are many latest tools like splunk and other uh, elk tools which is elastic uh log stash and kibana tools using which you can make it or present it in a much better fashion but that's okay this is what pega gives you out of the box let's try to understand this if you, whenever you get a chance later in your life you can understand those tools they're not necessary right now so when you open a log file there is a way in which you can read this log file the first thing is understanding how is the timing going on in this thing so what's the chronology or uh how how the time can be tracked in this thing so the first line if you see on the right hand side the this particular portion just concentrate on this particular portion in all these lines if you see this is always the earliest or the most recent to the one which is like you know going down does it make sense From the earliest to the most recent yes no making sense 
see this started at 2125 which means 9 uh, like 925 is what you can take and then coming down it is increasing 926 earliest is when it has started to the most recent if you keep going down this is the most recent this is how you will know what is the time when any event happened that's how you will read this of course the first this thing is date i hope you guys already got it that's a no-brainer right but this is the order in which the time is specified here you need to know how to check for time someone will report oh i'm not able to access the application the first thing you ask him is since when are you facing this he will give you a time frame oh today morning also i faced that since morning i have not been able to so whatever time he gives you go back and check for that time window is there any issue during that window does it make sense how we can go and check a log file for issues yes no perfect also there is severity with respect to a log file how can we know that if you keep coming further on that line there is this portion which tells see these four characters it tells it's a information it is telling information is something which you want to put in a log file which is inf which is for your information like you know the system start date is this this is when it was started see now we know when the system got started in the same way it is also telling you the version is pega 8.7 is the info for example if there is any warning it has to tell you it will give you in this way warn one no setting for alerts or granular something like that but it is a warning if you it is a warning you will know by this thing it's a one warning same way if we keep going down for errors you will have error i don't think we have any errors right now so we won't be seeing that but there are different settings one is of course uh info which tells you that this is a information which means notification of runtime events or such such as startup or shutdown stuff like that it is what this will be telling you you also have something called as warn which tells you potential issues that might cause any adverse performance uh, issues like you know like that it uh, it's warning you and telling you this you may have to address you will see a lot of those this won't stop your this thing but it's just for your information is what sometimes you will see something called as fatal here which means severe error that can cause your application to close so those are very important fatal uh, if you see anything with fatal that means that it's something which you have to take a look at or someone if you have a lead system architect you have to bring it bring that to his notice and tell we see this fatal errors maybe it is not something to worry about but he will help you understand if it is fatal and it is not to be worried about he will help you understand those are fatal also you will see something called as error for example you are trying to see do we see something called as error here see during agent experience they see some error some errors that might allow the application to continue running but there is this error which is available in the system you will also see something called as alert you know when you have performance related issues such as uh, if some some database operation you're trying to fetch some data it's taking beyond a certain time then you will see something called as alert all these are logging levels you know which come as part of logging also you will have something called as debug that we can enable and we can check debug means information events that are useful for debugging like you know it will help you it's more granular like you know uh, rather than telling uh, Harish just logged in it is like telling Harish provided username Harish provided password now Harish logged in does it make sense more granular because you want to debug that these are logging levels all I'm trying to help you is this file shouldn't feel like oh I don't understand this no you shouldn't be telling that you should be telling oh I understand this this is what it means this first section talks about the timestamp from the earliest to the recent going down and then these are something which are logging levels which are available does it make sense yes no perfect so we should also see some traces i'm not seeing any trace we'll try to generate some traces. no issues okay uh,
if it is having multiple pages you will see that these will be more one two three four five six like that correspondingly you will have more such instances now any operation i do in my application it should keep adding issues there so i can say create no case types um, on alpha insurance let me switch to alpha auto now just just this moment we'll add some log details to it also we'll try to create some cases so we will see more data there right i want to see some exceptions so that i can show you how a stack trace looks like that's why i want to generate some files okay see this fetches us a report using report definition let it happen perfect so there are no reports that's fine we just want to access more of this application to see more logs uh, perfect policy for class hierarchy you can add some records if you want and then submit last time that's okay we don't want to add anything here and copy that to here Submit. So just trying to create a few work objects to see if those go into the log files. That is something which we want to do also. For example, uh, we do have one activity. Let's try to run this activity also so that we will see if anything on these lines also comes over there. Actions, run. some error came here let us see if all these gets added to our log files going back to access my log files system operations logs and from here i'll click on log files and i will access my pega log file which is pega rules dot log very important to remember see by default it shot uh, it defaults to this just take off this content and you should be good see now we should have do you have two pages no but one page but because we have 5000 lines we are seeing more perfect now if you see um, in this particular log file now we see that of course exactly looks similar along with that whenever if you have any exception for example see we have exception here see, exception if you create exception due to db failure one exception came in uh, some database access issue has come in whenever you see some exception if you see from this event it spun off a exception see this event resulted in an error make sense yes no and then that resulted in an exception this is the same event which is continuing and it is telling there is an exception database exception see when someone tells you there is an exception you can come and check here error null value in column customer id violates non null constraint some constraint and then you will see this trace this trace 
see what has caused that error is something which is coming here this is called as stack trace trace of error or exception trace if a system error generates an exception error is thrown and a trace of the exception is recorded in this log file that's what is happening here for that particular exception this is the trace trace is nothing but you know when you uh, try to walk into a wet jungle behind you will see steps of yours yes or no that's a trace of how, when you did when you did that activity what was what happened at the back is your trace is left exactly same thing is true here when you are performing that operation this is the stack trace which got generated for that particular exception whenever they talk about any issue they'll say oh do we have any stack trace of the exception in the log files is what they will say this is what they mean does it make sense very important basics about log files this is what you need to know about log files and this will help you like pretty much every log file in every application just has this timestamp which will tell you what is the recent and the most or uh, what is the earliest what is the type of log is it a information it's a warning it's a fatal error it's a uh, it's a debug message whatever it is you know and then there is a stack trace associated with that you can figure out all that information here and of course you can change them change these values here in this particular log file this is a basic understanding was it clear guys with respect to uh, logs what do we do and stuff like that yes no perfect so now along with this we can uh, there is also one other option if you see here of course there are other log files also most of your pega related details are available in pega rules log file and most of the time you will be accessing this if you are seeing any security event then you will go for security event log if you have any mobile build for example if you are doing a mobile build on your application which we are not doing in our case you it will come in mobile build dot log same way if there is any alert security then it will come in this particular alert security dot log we have different log files you know depending upon which uh, operation you are trying to do. alert log files contains performance related alerts triggered when for example any operation exceeds a specified performance threshold for example you are trying to extract some data from maybe a table in a database and it exceeded that then it comes in this alert log file are you able to see this see pega rules hyphen alert log this will have details about that you hardly will be accessing this because if there are any performance related issues then you will be coming and checking it here usually uh, the the log files with pega will be covering most of the part if you don't find it there you can come and check does it make sense yes no same way like alert you have something called as alert security also you know this will have some security related for example if the if someone tampered your url while you are using hardly happens like never happens in pega but if it happened then you will be looking in this alert security the only special part about this is they start with seccu hyphen if you see here the code is seccu 00001 seccu so if you see something like that you will know that this is the alert security file nothing much just giving you understanding that all these log files are available pretty much your pega rules log file should help you with most of the stuff in the same way you have something called as bix bix is bix stands for something called as business intelligence exchange which is nothing but a extraction tool because we have most of our data sitting in blob right we saw that when we did our training we saw that most of our data sits in binary large objects yes or no in the work table yes no so to support extraction of data from that we use a framework called bix which is which stands for business intelligence exchange some data warehouses will need that data to be extracted you know 
in such processes we will be using Bix. Right now we have not we haven't used Bix anywhere here. But few processes they want some data for processing for analytics to perform some analytics on that data. That time we'll be using Bix and anything any issues as part of that will come and sit inside this. If you see right now we have no entries in this log because we haven't performed anything as such. That is Bix. There is uh, also a cluster log which contains uh, setup and runtime behavior of the cluster. Like whenever you try to uh, log into your system, there is a cluster which is associated with your application. That details are here. Nothing which you will be accessing, maybe some system administrator for him, these logs will make sense, which will talk about how exactly your cluster is behaving or what is your cluster. Details like that are available here. Nothing for you to bother but just know that all these log files are available as i said pega rules log file very important we see that everything which we are doing is getting spit into this particular log file pega rules log file make sense guys yes no very good perfect so let me close this also there is log level settings uh, this link has been moved to admin studio okay so in this particular version they have moved it to admin studio let's go there and check check it out so let us go to admin studio and we should be able to see so previously we did have it there now they have moved it here so let us see where exactly it is not in system of course i guess resources log categories see click on log categories you will see different logs here different logs which are available and you can set their level here see we are talking about levels error like these these are the different current log level whatever is set is what is here so you can click on this and see what is the log level set to this. It should be an option to reset them also. See, change log level. If you click on these three dots, you can change them. You can click on this change log and you'll see what all different log levels are there. You can turn off that log. For example, if your log file is getting too huge, you don't want to add them, you can turn them off. You can alert, fatal, error, warn, info and debug. If you set it to all, it will print all these and your log file will be so big, which is not an ideal way. So you should always limit it to what you want. Sometimes when you are seeing issues, you can turn on debug level. They will ask you, what will you do if you are seeing issues or exceptions? You can say, first of all, I'll go to my log file, see if there is anything available which talks about this particular issue, maybe an exception which helps me understand what is happening. Maybe the database username password is wrong. I can identify that if it is not sufficient i will change the debugging log level to debug and then i will try to trace it again and see what is appearing in the log file does it make sense guys yes no perfect very good so this is how you will be modifying the log levels and for example if you want to reset that to whatever it was by default you can tell the how many hours you want to test it for also so, for example, if you don't forget it in that particular setting and the log file keeps increasing and it runs out of space or something like that, you can limit that also, maybe for two hours or something like that. Sounds like a decent setting for us to, you know, figure out and understand what exactly is going on with my log file. Yes or no? Yes or no, guys? Perfect. Perfect. So whenever you get a chance, just try to explore this further and understand how exactly that is being done. First thing. Perfect. Going back to Dev Studio. And now, what if you want to put something explicitly into a log file? How can we do that? For example, you're trying to perform some operation in your activity and you want to add a certain message into the log file, let us say. How can I do that? I just uncommented one of the activities. And I want to, let us say, add a message. All I can do is there is a method which Pega already provides. Pega already provides that which is called as log 
I just type log and if you come down see log hyphen message log hyphen message when will we use this for example if you want to perform a certain operation within your activity and you also want to log that into the uh, log file you want to put that in the log file telling that hey there is this particular operation happening and I want to capture this particular thing also into the log to do that you can create uh, a log hyphen message uh, step in the activity which will in which you can put your uh, information whatever you want to do so once you specify a log message you can expand that and it will tell you what is the message you want to put there let us say I want to say started processing the customer fields in delivery section a message I want to specify when I am running why do you want to do this here because when you are trying to run a flow you don't know when this activity is getting called you want to understand you want to make sure when you are reading the logs you know that this particular activity got called and it is running successfully does it make sense to do that we will be using this and you can specify a log level instead of info there is another log level we can specify which is called as info forced this will force this information onto the log info forced if you want to generate a trace of that you can do that by default when you specify it it will be set to error but putting it to info forced you can change that level and we can see if this is actually printing something in our log files right if there is any issue also you want to tra trace uh, the stack you can click on this thing and it will generate a stack trace and if you want to send it to tracer when you trace it will also come in that come in tracer as well which is not necessary right now let us just say we want to see this message whenever this activity is getting executed I want to uh, you know uh, see this message in my log file let me save this and just run it should end up in error and it should of course put something in my uh, application let us see let's go back to our log files system logs log files of course bigger will start log Now, if we want to see multiple pages, see, I'll just say 500 lines and we should be able to see multiple pages now. Come down. See, one, two, three, like this. So, let us say I want it is on the second page. We are looking for our log message. Let us see if it is here. What did we give the text there as? Log hyphen message. System queue. Uh, 
Okay, should we check in? Can check in this also. Also, what I will do, I'll also add my operator ID. Let us say. Let us say I want to also add a property to this. We can do that. Ex application. Let us say we'll print the application, and you can append text to this, so, and say sample message from activity. Perfect. Dot px application, and then you can also append further stuff to it. You can do plus, and then you can say say Let us verify if we are seeing anything. But on a whole, you get the idea that how exactly you can put in a message into the log file, right? Yes, no. Perfect. So, see, perfect. So now we see our message right here. Sample message from activity, testing from logs. Yes or no? See? This is how you can add your custom messages. You can test them by adding them. So now you know this activity guard card and it's a spit this particular information in the logs. So very important to understand what are logs all about. Helps you debug any application and understand what issues are there by you know going back into the log and looking at this did it make sense guys yes no this is it for the logging class so if this was understood we can end this particular topic and we can move on to the next lecture